you all for the ESP session. I think uh, Shankar gave a brief overview of, of the enterprise service bus and, uh, 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 and about the uh, WS3 integration platform. So uh, the objective of my talk is to go into the details of uh, enterprise service bus, uh, how it is used and what are the features available and uh, what are the features that are coming in the uh, next ESP release. Uh, let me uh, talk a bit about the uh, agenda for my talk. So I'll uh, briefly discuss how connected business and integration uh, uh, are related in uh, each other and a bit about the evolution of integration, uh, how it integration has evolved, uh, how ESB has emerged and what are the modern trends of enterprise integration. Uh, and also a brief overview about uh, uh, WSO3 ESB, uh, the core features available, and then what's new in uh, ESB 4.9, uh, the next ESB release. And, uh, and also about the WSO3 uh, integration platform as a service, or the integration cloud, how it is implemented uh, by leveraging uh, WSO2 ESB features, and, uh, and a glimpse of uh, ESB roadmap, uh, what we have planned in the upcoming uh, ESB releases and what is our uh, ESB uh, development strategy uh, for the next couple of years. So uh, I think you hear uh, quite a lot about the concept of a connected business. So it is all about uh, having uh, smooth interactions between uh, different parties. Uh, it can be uh, between your organization uh, and your partners, your customers, and internal systems. So the core of uh, building a connected business is to have a solid integration platform uh, so that there are no uh, frictions between interactions. So the main purpose of uh, having a solid integration platform or a solid integration backbone is to have a have frictionless interaction between uh, all these parties so so this particular diagram uh, maybe you can correlate this to uh, one of your uh, existing architectures in your organization because uh, in in most of the large organizations uh, at least some part of the architecture uh, looks like uh, this particular uh, diagram because uh, in an organization you will uh, you will be building different solutions right so you'll be using different software applications and uh, which are built from different technologies different standards and uh, and of course uh, the legacy systems uh, you cannot really get rid of some of the legacy systems, or you are still trying to get rid of those systems. But at the same time, you need to integrate these legacy systems with uh, the new uh, ongoing developments, such as uh, web services and REST services. And also, there are proprietary systems, which are based on proprietary standard. So integration between all these uh, systems and services uh, will be a mess if you don't have a proper integration backbone. So that is where you can leverage uh, an enterprise service bus uh, to connect all these disparate systems and have that as the main uh, integration backbone. So what it allows you to do is it allows you to integrate systems which are using different standards and protocols uh, and allow them to talk to each other uh, without doing any code at each uh, each system. So WSO2 ESP is uh, uh, based on this particular architecture. WSO2 ESP provides uh, different integration capabilities. So uh, WSO2 ESP is built uh, from scratch as a lightweight and high performance enterprise service bus. Uh, with the support for uh, REST, SOAP, and WS uh, STAR standards. Because initially it was uh, developed as a SOAP-based uh, enterprise service bus, but with over the last couple of years, we have enhanced 
and allo uh, allows you to integrate RESTful services and of we offer comprehensive support for uh, RESTful integration. And it comes with 100 plus connectors for different cloud APIs, uh, such as Salesforce, Twitter, uh, Twilio. And, and of course, we have uh, proprietary connectors or adapters for uh, domain-specific uh, systems, such as SAP, uh, FIX, and HL7 in healthcare domain. And uh, most importantly, everything that you do with uh, Enterprise Service Bus is based on uh, configuration. So that means you don't have to write any code to integrate any of these systems. It is completely configuration driven, and you can uh, follow the zero code approach. But if you have any customized requirement, if you want to integrate with some of your proprietary or in-house system, then we have ex ex extension points. So when we talk about the uh, enterprise integration and ESB space, uh, enterprise integration patterns uh, uh, plays a key role because most ESB vendors, uh, uh, are, most ESB vendors want to show their capabilities with the uh, use of enterprise integration patterns. How many patterns that uh, a given ESB can support? And uh, so, with uh, WSO2 ESB, we offer. 100% coverage of uh, all inter enterprise integration patterns. Uh, so it's not that we are just claiming that we are supporting, but each and every pattern is documented and freely available, and uh, you can uh, learn about each and every integration pattern and how you can realize each and every pattern with the use of uh, Enterprise Service Bus. So you can go to, the, uh, go to our EIP guide uh, for, for more info information on uh, EIPs. So as I said earlier, the connectors, uh, uh, so WSU ESP comes with, uh, uh, actually it offers uh, support for different uh, public APIs. Uh, at the moment we have 100 plus connectors. Again, everything is free and open source. You can uh, download it from storepreview.wsu.com. So the main purpose of using a connector is to easily access a given public uh, API, such as Salesforce. So connectors is the main backbone of uh, WSO2 integration cloud, which I'll be uh, discussing later. So earlier I said uh, ESB is built from scratch as a lightweight and high-performance ESB. So Based on our performance test, which we have done in every release, uh, uh, we have evaluated WS2 ESB against several other open source ESB competitors. So you, as you can see in the diagram, uh, we are the fastest open source ESB uh, based on these uh, various message routing scenarios. And it is not just about the performance numbers, we have uh, we, we have hundreds, thousands of deplo deployments across the globe, and ESP is battle tested for most extreme conditions. And of course, uh, we have proven case studies for handling billions of messages. Uh, just to give an example, we have been closely working with eBay uh, during 2014 and helping them to tune the ESP layers so that uh, they can handle the uh, traffic that are there in the uh, uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving period. So last year, we managed to handle over six billions of transactions using uh, WSO2 ESB layers. So that is the average number of transactions per day uh, using uh, ESB layers. So then I would like to talk a bit about uh, what's new in ESP 4.9. So at the moment, we have released uh, ESP 4.9 alpha release. And let's uh, have a quick look at what are the new features available in 4.9. So, so with the introduction of the uh, new concept known as uh, inbound endpoints, we sort of redefining the way that you can send messages into the ESP. 
So that means uh, the inbound messaging, uh, you can dynamically configure any inbound messaging channel without any restart of the ESP. So that means uh, there are two types of inbound messaging channels. Uh, one is listening inbound endpoints, and uh, examples are HTTP, HS7, TCP, etc. And for polling behavior, you have polling inbound endpoints. So with the new ESP, it allows you to create these inbound endpoints inbound messaging channels dynamically. Uh, and once you create the channel, then you can inject the message from that particular protocol into the message flow. So if you have been using ESB uh, at the moment, uh, this is similar to uh, what ESB transport uh, offers you. But uh, as you know, transport configurations are dynamic, but this is completely, uh, sorry, transport configurations are static, but this is completely dynamic. So going into the details of uh, listening inbound endpoints, so you, as you can see uh, in this particular example, you can create any HTTP inbound messaging channel. You just configure uh, inbound endpoint, HTTP inbound endpoint, and it, it will start listening on a specific port. And when you send a request to that port, uh, then you can correlate that inbound endpoint with a sequence, then the message will be injected into the ESB message flow. So this is fully supported in multi-tenanted environment as well. Uh, so that means you can have two tenants which are listening in two different HTTP ports, and you can send uh, messages to, to those two tenants. So at the moment, we are supporting uh, HTTP, HL7, uh, WS reliable messaging and TCP as uh, inbound listening endpoints. So with the polling, <coughs> polling inbound endpoints, uh, it is similar to what uh, the existing JMS VFS transport offer. So that, that allows you to dynamically poll a given message source. This message so source can be a JMS queue or a file system or FTP lo location. And again, you can dynamically create all these uh, polling inbound endpoints and poll a given message source and dynamically uh, inject messages into the uh, ESP message flow. And this uh, all, uh, also supports the coordination because uh, you might want to have multiple uh, message consumers in a in a ESB cluster, for instance. Uh, let me go into the details of uh, cluster deployment. So, in in this particular ESB cluster, you have uh, two different architectures. So, one is uh, one consumer approach and the multiple consumer approach. So, assume that you have deployed uh, uh, an ESB cluster, and now you want to define a JMS polling inbound endpoint. So you can make sure that at a given time, only one JMS consumer or a JMS polling inbound, inbound endpoint is running. And if that particular node is not available, then there will be a leader election among these ESB cluster nodes, and a new leader will be elected. So this particular feature was not there in uh, all the ESB uh, versions, which are based on transport. But with the introduction of uh, polling inbound endpoints, you can achieve this one consumer uh, cluster deployment uh, for polling uh, transports. And if you want to have multiple consumers, then that is also possible. Uh, so you can configure, so, uh, configure the inbound endpoint so that they will be executed on all uh, ESB nodes. So again, we improved the coordination support for scheduled tasks. So as you know, uh, in ESB, you can have scheduled tasks running uh, based on a uh, uh, given uh, interval or a based on a uh, cron job. And uh, with the coordination support, again, you can make sure that a given task is executed on a given ESB cluster node. And if that particular node is not available, there will be a new task spawn in some of the other uh, worker nodes. 
So this allows you to have failover support for scheduled tasks. Uh, again, uh, in the previous releases, uh, we don't have the failover support for uh, scheduled tasks. So similarly, message processes, uh, this is mainly used for uh, store and forward implementation, uh, guaranteed delivery scenario. Message processes are executed, uh, they also can be executed in one consumer mode or multiple uh, consumer mode. And also with the new uh, ESP 4.9 release, we are introducing a new message flow model. <coughs> so, uh, so as you, if you are, if you have used ESP in the past, you are, you may be familiar with in and out sequence model. But uh, with the new uh, release, uh, we we promote uh, the call mediator and respond mediator approach where you send the message from any of these message entry points and then inject the message into the sequence. And you can leverage call mediator to do any external calls and then again continue with the message flow. If you are familiar with the ESB, uh, in, in earlier releases you need to use two sequences, uh, one for processing uh, requests, one for processing response. But with this approach, right after sending the request, to the back end, uh, then you can start processing the response in the same sequence. So with this approach, uh, the service chaining will be uh, far more easier to implement, and uh, development effort will be uh, comparatively very less uh, in, uh, than the previous approach. And also, we, we included support for Kafka, MQTT, and RabbitMQ. Uh, with the latest release. So these are a uh, set of emerging uh, uh, MQ standards, enterprise messaging standards. So we have uh, uh, capability of consuming messages from any of these protocols, as well as uh, sending messages uh, into these uh, uh, protocols. And also we are introducing a couple of uh, new mediators. Uh, maybe uh, you may have uh, had this particular requirement to have a generic loop in message flow. So that is the purpose of uh, uh, that is a, that is the main purpose of uh, introducing for each mediator. So <coughs> you can have uh, generic loops, uh, which, which is which resembles to XSL for each, uh, so that uh, you can have generic message loops in the mediation flow. Uh, the behavior is very similar to XSL for each, uh, but not uh, similar to iterate, where, we, where you can split the message into multiple parts and send it to different services. But what for each allows you to do is uh, you can specify a given uh, message payload, which is repo repeating over and over again, and uh, allows you to uh, loop through all the elements in that particular uh, message. And also we have uh, enhanced uh, cache and throttle mediators with uh, distributed caching support. And uh, we have a file connector that, uh, that you can use for uh, triggering file I.O. So that can, uh, that can be used to create files in a given uh, location, like a local file system, FTP. Or if you want to do file copying between two different locations, uh, this is capable of doing high-performance NIO-based file copying uh, between a source and a destination. So, WS2 Integration Cloud, uh, Shankar uh, explained a bit about uh, uh, Integration Cloud. Uh, so, this is powered by ESB, and there are two aspects of the Integration Cloud. Uh, first one is ESB as a service, that means whatever the things that you do with the on-premise ESP instance, the thing that you download from the website, uh, the things that you uh, do in that particular instance can be done in the cloud uh, using our ESP as a service uh, solution. And also we have integration templates or recipes uh, which, which provides the uh, pre-built integration scenarios uh, 
such as uh, send an email when Jira project is overdue. So likewise, this kind of uh, pre-built integration scenarios. So the main objective is to uh, to use these templates by a non-technical person. For example, uh, they can configure these templates, these uh, recipes, and create an instance of their uh, instance of these recipes based on their credentials and based on their requirement, so that those uh, recipes will be executed uh, from the uh, WS2 integration cloud. So this is a high-level overview of uh, what we are planning to do next. So uh, of course, we are at the moment working in the ESB 4.9 release. Uh, we have just released alpha a uh, couple of weeks ago. And uh, uh, so these features will be available uh, in the next CSB uh, releases. Uh, that means not, not in the 4.9, but uh, in uh, 5.0 and uh, the other future releases. So our main focus will be on supporting end-to-end -end message tracing uh, so that you can give a given message ID and track the path of the message and where are the message, uh, if there are failures, the reason for the failure, so that you can uh, track the path of, the, uh, of a given message. And also mediation debugging. Uh, when you are developing ESP configuration, how you can debug uh, a given uh, mediation configuration. And also we are uh, currently doing some R&D work related to a new transport based on NETI. So, uh, so we are expecting this transport to be uh, 1.5 or 2x faster than the existing transport. And along with that, we will uh, offer you the uh, WebSocket support, uh, because that is also part of the uh, NETI framework. And uh, also, there is an ongoing project on supporting JMS 2.0. Uh, and also, we are working on other enterprise messaging uh, standard uh, support. Uh, so especially in 4.9, we included Kafka MQTT and uh, uh, RabbitMQ support. And also file-based integration. Uh, as you know, file-based integration is still heavily used. So we, we, we are working on implementing a complete solutions uh, based on ESB for file-based integration. So managing files, uh, sort of a file gateway kind of a solution. And also different business adapters. Uh, especially we have en enhanced the HL7 support in 4.9. And uh, we are planning to include HL7 3.0 support. And also uh, we are working on improving SAP, uh, mainly for BAPI transport support and uh, other standards such as ACE2, SWIFT, uh, and ISO uh, 8583 standards. Okay, so with that, uh, I would like to conclude my uh, session on ESP.